All right, so to make our poinsettia flowers, you're going to need to have 65 pound cardstock. I'm using a red and a green here for a traditional poinsettia. You could also do pinks or whites as well. And I'm also gonna be using my Cricut machine for this. You can use any of the Cricut machines, even the Joy machine will work. Uh, you just will have to cut out less petals per cut. Um, but any of the Cricut machines will work for this. The templates that go with this are linked below in the video description if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're on my blog, then you can just scroll up to the supply section and you'll find the link right there to download the templates and follow along. You'll also need a thin wood dowel for curling our petals. And I will be adorning the center of my poinsettias with some pearls. You'll also need a hot glue gun, which is what I use. And I will also be featuring my Paper Bloom Shaping Mat and Tool Set, and I will explain how we will use that as we get to that in the video. It is optional, but it's a great tool to have if you do a lot with paper flowers or paper crafts in general. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on this paper poinsettia craft. So to access the poinsettia templates, you're gonna to wanna to go to members.abbykirstencollections.com and you'll wanna create an account if you don't have one already. If you do have one already, then if you're watching this as soon as the video comes out, you'll see that right at the top. If you do not, then you'll just want to type in the search poinsettia and it will come up along with all of our other poinsettia designs. You can click on it and you can download the printable PDFs, the SVG files, or you can download all of the files as a zip on your device or computer. I have my templates loaded up in Quick Design Space, and if you need more tips on how to upload SVG files and set them up in Design Space, make sure you follow the link to that blog post uh, because I'm going to give you additional tips in there. Once my templates are set up and my machine is flashing and telling me to load, I'm going to go ahead and press the roller against the mat and click that double arrow flashing button. I have chosen a medium weight cardstock setting for this because that is the best setting to correspond with my 65 pound cardstock. So we're going to load our mat and we're going to let our Cricut machine cut out these templates. If you do not have a Cricut machine, there are PDF printable templates that come with the template set. So even if you don't own a machine yet or don't wish to ever own a machine, you can still cut by hand with a pair of scissors. It's just going to take a little more time and patience. All right, so my machine is ready to cut this out. I'm going to hit the flashing arrow there to go. So now I can go ahead and unload my templates. They're done cutting. When we remove our cardstock from the mat, make sure you flip the mat over and you peel the mat away from the material to help eliminate the curling of your cardstock, especially important when you're dealing with paper crafts. Fortunately, my mat isn't super sticky because I've been using it a lot, so it's coming off pretty easy, but if you're using a fresher mat, you'll definitely um, want to do this. It'll come in handy to keep your flower petals from curling on, on you there. All right, so I have all of my poinsettia petal layers cut out. You're going to see in the templates, there's going to be a base layer, which is the greenery. Then there's going to be this first largest layer. There'll be two identical layers here that have four points and then two smallest identical layers here that have three points. That is the petals you will need to have cut out in order to create one poinsettia flower. So starting with the greenery here, I'm gonna grab my Cricut scraper. You can also use the edge of your scissors and I'm just gonna fold right down the center to give it a little crease. I'm gonna do that with each one. So that each one of these green holly leaves has a little crease to it, okay? So it's all you need to do with the greenery part. And then with the rest of these, we're gonna curl them with a wood dowel and then we're gonna encourage the petals to stand up using the Paper Bloom Shaping Mat and Tool Set I mentioned in the introduction. So I'm using a quarter inch wood dowel here and I'm just gonna press each petal point around it so that it curls. And you can use a spare glue stick in a pinch or even a pencil or pen so if you don't have a wood dowel, that's okay. You can use some other objects like that. They'll work just fine. And I'm gonna do this with each of these. All the way down. Now when you get to the smaller ones, it's not gonna curl all that much. I kind of give it just a little pinch just to help it not be completely flat, but it's not going to curl all that much for you. So 
So I have my paper balloon shaping mat and tool set here and what this does is it's going to encourage the paper to want to stand up so that the petals are not completely flat. And it can also be a tool that you can use to actually curl the petals themselves like this as well. So if you're interested in this, you'll find it linked below in the video description or if you're in the blog post, you'll also find it linked in the supply section. So at the center of my uh, poinsettia layer here, I'm just gonna press and roll in a circular motion and you see how much more it's standing up now compared to how it was flat. And when we press into this mat like this, instead of just gathering the petals, which is an alternative if you don't have this, you can just gather the petals. But because we cupped the center, it's going to really encourage the paper to basically stay that way and not eventually fall flat due to gravity. So I'm gonna do that with each of these pieces here and just give it a little bit of a press in the center. And then to get started building the poinsettia here, we're gonna start with the greenery base and the largest piece. And I'm gonna grab my hot glue gun and put just a little bit of hot glue right at the base. And then we're gonna place this on. And you wanna aim so that your petal points here are alternating. So we can see the green through the red. They're not directly stacked and it looks like it's blossoming open. So that's the goal. And I'm going to repeat this now with the rest of the layers. Now, once you get past that first initial red layer, these have four points. So you won't be able to get it perfectly alternated because there's not five, there's only four. But you still want to aim to try to have two or three of them falling kind of in between. And then you want to use the next layer here the same way as we used the very first two layers. You want to set that in there and you want it to open out so that these petal points are alternating to the layer below it, okay? And then we're down to our two smallest ones here, so I'm just gonna glue those right into the center. Just need a little dot of glue. Allow that to open, and these are three points, so they will kind of just open as, you know, they will. And then with this one, the other 3.1, you can aim to alternate to the layer below it. There we go. All right, so the poinsettia is essentially built, and I like to add an adornment of my pearls to the center. Technically, the pearl is completely optional. I just like the way it looks and how it adds a little extra touch to the center. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of hot glue on one side of the pearl and then place it right down into the center there. And there we go. Our poinsettia is now finished. I have lots more poinsettia designs. I design a new one almost every year, or I have for the last five years, although I think I'm running out of options when it comes to making it look like a poinsettia, I have three giant versions and this is now my third or this is my fourth small version. And you can make these bigger too. So this only measures about three and a half inches at its widest point. But if you wanted to scale these larger on your cutting machine, you could. So you could go you know, five or six inches and make them a lot bigger. That's absolutely possible as well. And if you want, you could always add additional layers as well to make it even more full. Sometimes when you get to the bigger um, sizes if you scale up you may need to add an additional like base layer here to keep it nice and full looking. To grab these templates go ahead and follow that link below this description and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now!